Hi everyone, this is Brad Satin for HAPCO Philadelphia, and today we are talking about landlord-tenant mediation to give HAPCO members sort of a better understanding of how it works and the pros and cons of mediation. And joining us today is Marie Kramer. She's with ASAP Mediation Services based in Philadelphia. She's also, I know, a volunteer with the mediation part of Philadelphia's eviction diversion program. Marie, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you for having me. Sure. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what your company does. Oh, definitely. Uh, so my name is Marie Kramer, and I'm a certified uh, mediator. My company is a submediation LLC. We specialize in landlord-tenant mediations. Um, I have been a mediator for over a year and a half, and I take pleasure in helping both landlords and tenants uh, resolve their issues in a friendly way. So let's start at the very beginning. What exactly is mediation? Mediation is an alternative way of dispute resolution in which parties, in this case, landlords and tenants, uh, meet with a neutral party, a mediator, to resolve their issues. And when might a property owner, a landlord, know that, hey, I need help, I need mediation? When they have any issues with their tenants, it could be uh, non-payment of rent, security deposits, uh, dispute between uh, roommates, uh, breach of lease agreements, they want to terminate the lease, any issues that they have with their tenant. I guess after you've kind of exhausted the conversation, right? If That's you feel correct, like yes. it's not going anywhere. Right, exactly, yeah. The city of Philadelphia, as most of us know now, has an eviction diversion program. Uh, how is mediation tied to that? The city of Philadelphia requires all landlords to who wants to file for eviction to go through the uh, city's eviction diversion program. One of the major components of the programs is a mandatory mediation program. Not all cases go through mediation with the city's eviction diversion program. The city has four different pathways to root applications once they receive them. Uh, there's one that is mediation only. Uh, this is for cases that involve issues other than non-payment of rent or where the landlord does not want to accept financial assistance. There is direct negotiation. This is for situations where the arrears are over $3,000. Um, there is targeted financial assistance only. This is for situations where non-payment of rent is the only issue. And then there is targeted financial assistance plus mediation. This is for situations where there is a standing rent, but there are other issues like an unauthorized occupant, unauthorized pet, many other issues could be part of that. However, private mediation can be used to supplement working with the city's eviction diversion program. The benefits of utilizing uh, traditional mediation like ASAP mediation uh, provides is that it's faster. Uh, it could be a faster resolution. It reduces stress. It preserves the landlord-tenant relationship. And it creates a proven path for resolving uh, conflicts in the future. Do you or should you have an attorney going into mediation? It really depends. If you have a situation where the tenant has become aggressive, definitely, or that anyone's safety is at risk, definitely hire an attorney first. Uh, otherwise, uh, the issues I mentioned before, you can use a mediator uh, first to try to resolve it in a friendly manner because once tenants hear the word addiction, they can become very adversarial. Well, I, I would think cost is a big factor for a lot of landlords here. Um, you, you talk about mediation being faster. Is it also cheaper than going through a traditional court? Definitely. Mediation is faster, is cheaper. Um, it has a lot of benefits, uh, definitely. So talk a little bit to us about how it works, the process. What are the steps? Uh, definitely. So the first part is that Let's say you're having an issue uh, with your tenant, right? So one of the, or the tenant is having an issue with you. So one of the parties will contact a mediator to help them resolve the issues. The mediator uh, kind of assess the situation and see if he's a good fit for mediation. Uh, the mediator reaches out to the other party and asks them to meet to mediate. So during the process, the mediator, at the very beginning of the session, the mediator explained the rules and everybody agrees to follow the rules during the meeting. The mediator then uh, one, uh, start with one of the parties. The party uh, explain all their side of their story. 
then uh, the other party explains their side of the story. The mediator then uh, clarify what issues they are and then receive feedback from the other party as to what they how they felt or any feedback regarding what the other party says. And then the mediator acts as a facilitator and it goes back and forth uh, until the parties reach a mutually beneficial solution to the issue. And then if they reach an agreement, the mediator will put it in writing and send it to all the parties. And it basically becomes law, right? It's it's what must be followed? It's kind of it's similar to your lease agreement. So it is an agreement that your tenant and you have reached. So it kind of becomes part of your lease agreement. So if you end up going to court with the tenant, the judge can see that the tenant have a history of breaching agreements and they can see it they can see the paperwork that, and that you try to work with the tenant. And so if I'm understanding it right, if you as a landlord think you're headed in the direction of eviction because the, of the city's eviction diversion program, you must, I guess, either get an attorney and go to court or get a mediator. You have to do one or the other. Is that right? So if you know that you are going for an eviction and you're having problems with the tenant, you, it is mandatory that all landlords go through the eviction diversion process. It's not mandatory for the tenants to go to, to the eviction process. So if you know that you're having a problem with your tenant, you can try to resolve it privately through a mediator. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, then you can go through the city's eviction diversion program. The good thing about mediation is that you retain your, uh, your eviction rights. So you can evict at any point but you can try to work it out with your tenants first. Are there any disadvantages to going through kind of mediation versus a traditional court? Uh, the only disadvantage is that, that right now in Pennsylvania is no bonding, uh, but like I mentioned before, if you reach an agreement, it cannot become part of your lease agreement. So you can show the judge that you already tried to resolve the issue with the tenants and it didn't work out. Uh, in the time that you've been doing this, what would you say are kind of the common mistakes that you see landlords make in this process? Uh, there's a few. Uh, one of them is not listening to the tenant, what the tenant is saying during the mediation. Uh, also, allowing something that the tenant say upset them, and then next thing you know, the tenant is upset as well. And then everybody starts yelling, and I have to de-escalate the situation. Uh, also, not attending mediation, uh, ready to, to prepare to compromise. Most landlords feel like compromising means letting go of the rent, but in reality, that's just one of the ways, one of the solutions that it can be can happen. Uh, they need to be flexible. They need to come ready to mediation, uh, ready to land an agreement that works for everybody. And then think about like the best alternatives to a, 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 a um a best alternative to a negotiated agreement. This is a term used in, in mediation and in legal terms that basically ask the parties to question what would happen next if I don't, if I don't read a, a resolution. And then the last thing is um, not thinking outside of the box when it comes to solutions. Uh, I would suggest to landlords that they come to the table prepared with three solutions that would work for them and that are satisfactory and sustainable. And then also be open to what the tenant's solutions are as well. Uh, you know, the solution from a landlord's point of view, I, I think most of the time is, you know, it, it's the financial aspect, right? What other things should they consider? Um, in terms, they, there are many ways to work out a solution. It's, it's uh, unlike when you go in front of a judge that is kind of like black and white and they decide a specific things, with um, when you come through mediation, there are so many ways. It could be payment agreements. It could be a friendly departure. If things are not working out with the tenant, it could be pretty much anything that you and the tenant agree to. Do you find that uh, in the end of this process, most landlords are as satisfied as they likely could be? It depends on what they when when they come to the. Uh, to the mediation, it depends what attitude they have. If they come with an open mind to work things out with the tenant, they are they are satisfied at the end. If they come with a, with an attitude that this is this is it or nothing, then they might not be. 
Well, whether it's ASAP Mediation Services or, or someone else, what would you say is the first step? If, if folks are hearing this and resonating because they're in a situation, what first step should they take? They, the first thing is that they should make sure that the mediator have experience with landlord tenant situations. They definitely want to make sure that the mediator can be neutral because mediation, one of the main things of mediation is that you got to have neutrality so that the mediator can be neutral and then just get the process started. And then um, if they want to use us, um, they can call us at 484-324-8164. They can also email me at maria at and if they want to learn more about my company, they can visit us at my website at asapmediationservices.com. Marie Kramer with ASAP Mediation Services. Thanks so much for your time. I think this is good information for our HAPCO members. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. You too. And thanks for being here. I'm Brad Satin. We'll see you again next time.